friends. Hello. I'm me, Nikki. Nice, nice to make your acquaintance again as myself. Out of the Facebook jail. I don't want to talk about it. No, it's a really funny story, I promise. <laughs> it's kind of dumb and kind of annoying, but it's also really funny. But here I am, I'm back, I'm free. Uh, so, I'm making tacos for Taco Tuesday. Tacos are my spirit animal. And you know I'm unprepared. So my taco meat's right out of the freezer again. <laughs> taco meat right out of the freezer. It's fine. I don't prepare for things much. But you know what the good news is? Um, since I have Epicure, I don't have to be prepared because... The answer to what's for dinner is always, oh, let me figure it out quick. I got this. Hey, Debbie. How are ya? Um, I'm just going to cook some hamburger. So, this is totally frozen. It still has ice on it. Hey, Andrea. So, I am throwing this bad boy right into the microwave for four minutes to thaw it out. So we'll put this on a plate because safety first, put your steamer on a plate. Multi-purpose steamer uses the water that's already in your food to trap in the moisture, uses the moisture that's already in your food to cook your food. So you don't need to add any oil, you don't need to add any water, you don't need to add anything extra, whatever is in your food. That's what's going to cook your food, so you're not going to lose any nutrients when you're cooking your food. Um, I'm putting the steamer lid on so those steamer vents are away from the handle. Because, well, since we're actually using, um, we're putting this on a plate for safety, you know, because this is flexible. So we put it on a plate so that it doesn't, like, you know, when you pick it up, kind of the lid can kind of pop off and you can get a steam burn. I don't want you to do that. Put your steamer on a plate. Put the steamer vents away from the handles. This is going in the microwave for four minutes to thaw it. Boom, four minutes. Okay, and then while we're doing that, I'm going to make some salsa. I have a fresh tomato here. It's not as good as fresh out of the garden tomatoes, but we're not quite there yet, are we? we are just moved our garden because um, we're going to build a pole shed. Um, and we're gonna the pole shed's gonna be built in April or in May, sorry. So all the groundwork and stuff is starting in the next couple of weeks. So we had to move our, our garden. So we um just like I don't know why I made it the same size. I should have made it smaller because it's such a huge garden. But I'm really looking forward to some garden fresh tomatoes. I should get like a um a greenhouse or something and have garden fresh tomatoes all year long. That sounds like a project that is for future Nikki. Future Nikki will have a greenhouse when, when Nikki has more time. <laughs> Does anybody have a greenhouse? I need probably to start researching this if future Nikki's gonna do that. So I am making up some fresh salsa here. And you guys already know that if you like fresh salsa, um, if you like salsa at all, you know that you really shouldn't keep salsa in the refrigerator, in the jar for more than two weeks. It starts to get kind of yucky after two weeks. Who has salsa in the refrigerator longer than two weeks? Yeah, shouldn't probably be using it after two weeks. Um, so what I love about this Poco Picante so much is that I can just make just as much as I want for, you know, whatever my family's going to eat. I can make it as spicy or as mild as I want. And I don't put any leftovers in the fridge because we eat them all that night for dinner or just enough to have leftovers for work the next day. All right, so I got my tomato all cut up and I'm just gonna put this right in. Dropping things, that's real life. So I'm just gonna put that right in to my bowl. And I'm gonna add 
It's my Poco Picante. It's hard to see. My light is so bright. Um, I have about a tablespoon left in here, and that's about what I want. Uh, if you like beans in your salsa, put beans, beans, mangoes, corn. Mm, that would be a really good salsa, but I don't have um, any corn or beans. But you could put that in there, make it however you want. And I don't have any fresh limes. Yeah, I went to Aldi today, didn't get fresh limes. So I'm just going to use a little bit of lime juice from the refrigerator. And so the best thing to do when you're making stuff like this, like especially the dips and stuff, Dip salsa guacamole, stir it up, mix it up, let it sit for like 10 or 15 minutes before you're going to eat it. Oh, you know what else I'm going to put in here? I'm going to put in some fresh ground sea salt because all these products are low to no sodium. So if you're new to Epicure and you haven't heard me say that before, make sure you add a little salt. If you don't have any sodium restrictions on your diet, add a little salt. It really kicks up the flavor. Um, if you do have sodium restrictions on your diet, I promise you're going to love these because you don't have to worry about the sodium. Now, my avocado wasn't quite right. My avocado wasn't quite right. Okay, so I put it in the microwave just like this. Put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Checked it. Still wasn't quite right. Put it back in the microwave for 30 more seconds. This thing is perfect. I'm going to mash up my hamburger, season it, and then we'll make the guac. <clears throat> All right. I can't wait. I love Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday is my favorite day of the week. All right. So my hamburger is, see this? Completely thawed. I'm just going to break it up. It might be a little bit, still a little tiny bit frozen in the center. If you wanted to make um hamburgers out of this i would do like an extra 30 seconds maybe or somewhere around there um depending on the power of your microwave if you just wanted to thaw out hamburger to make hamburgers you could definitely do that this got a little bit cooked on some edge but it's a little it's mostly just totally thawed and ready to rock and roll so we're gonna break it up so we have more surface area and then I'm going to throw in some taco seasoning. Taco. Uh, the taco packets in your cabinet. You should look at the ingredients on those guys. No bueno. Um, this really has all things you can pronounce and things you know. Chili powder, spices, onion, garlic, mustard, herbs, cayenne pepper, jalapeno pepper. Do you notice what's not in there? Salt. MSG. I have fructose corn syrup. None of that stuff's in there. So I have about a tablespoon left of this too. I need to buy more stuff, guys. I just got two boxes in the mail today. I just have to open them. All right, so I'm gonna season my hamburger meat and then I'm gonna hit it with a little salt too because I don't have any sodium restrictions. A little bit of salt. This is gonna go back in the microwave for like four minutes. And then we'll make the guacamole. Steamer lid on, vents away from the handles, back into the microwave for four minutes. Awesome. Okay. So my avocado. Back to my avocado. Okay. How many times do you get an avocado? Not ready when you want it, or it is overripe, or it's just overripe, underripe, or totally like mush in the inside. This one is perfect. Look at that. It's a, it's a little hot because it was in the microwave, but it's still, it's good. It's good. So we are going to, I love this avocado so much. Has any of you guys tried this? Tried this um, guacamole mix? Oh man, look at that pit comes right out too. All right, so we are going to scoop these out. And this, this avocado was, it was a little bit, um, I could squish it just a little bit, but it was definitely not ready for making guacamole. So I microwaved it, 30 seconds, checked, moved it, you know, tested it. 
If it was ready at 30 seconds, I'd have taken it out. Put it back in for another 30 seconds, and it was perfect. So I'm going to measure in one tablespoon of guacamole seasoning. Recipe's right on the back. I'm making just as much guacamole as I need for this meal. I'm not going to have a big container of guacamole going bad in the refrigerator, turning brown. What do I use it for? I would normally do a half a lime in this, but again, remember, forgot limes. So luckily I have some lime juice in the refrigerator. Do a little bit of salt. If you like more cilantro in your guacamole, I would definitely add more cilantro. I'm not like a huge cilantro person. I like it in some things, like salad dressings and stuff, but I don't really love a lot of cilantro in my guacamole. So this is like the perfect seasonings for me in guacamole. Um, you can definitely add more things if you want to, but I'm gonna tell you that you probably won't feel like you need to because this is some really great guacamole. Um, all this stuff comes, if you really like Mexican food, I would highly suggest the Good Mexican Meal Collection. That has like 40 servings of meals in it. Comes with a guacamole, comes with a fajita seasoning, comes with a poco picante, and you get two enchilada seasoning packets in it. So you can kind of try a bunch of things. It's really cost effective. After you buy your produce and your protein, comes out to about $2 per serving. Um, if you like meal delivery kits and stuff, um, those are like $9 a serving. So the cost savings is really significant. Plus you can customize stuff to how you like it. So like if you want peppers in your fajitas and onions and uh, I don't know, do people put mushrooms in their fajitas? I maybe be inclined to put mushrooms in my fajitas because I like mushrooms. Um, but you can totally customize and you can just add things to your grocery list on your grocery day so you know you have the things in your refrigerator and the cost savings there is just astronomical. When you are buying your own protein and your own produce and somebody just tells you, hey, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, bam, you got everything that you need for your meal. That's a huge, huge cost saving. And then, you know, you're kind of meal prepping without having to work super hard at meal prepping. Hi, Lucinda, hi, Diane. Yeah, Diane, you, I love this guacamole mix. Look at how beautiful that guacamole is. Remember, this avocado was not ready. The microwave made it ready. The microwave is magic, isn't it? It's so magic. All right, so the guacamole is ready. The hamburger is ready. Guess what? I got to announce a couple of winners. I'm, I picked two people from the Say Hi, Let Us Know You're Here post that I posted on Saturday. You guys are awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here. Hi. I love you guys. Even if you haven't commented and you're just kind of learning, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm super happy that I'm able to like show you guys why I love Epicure and how it can make your guys' life so much easier, faster, healthier, cheaper, especially if you're using meal delivery systems, you know what I mean? Um, Patty Keener Brewington and Elizabeth Settlin. Settlin, I think I'm saying that right. I'm going to tag you guys. I'm going to let you guys know that you win. And I'm going to send you guys dinner on me. Uh, I'll just have to get your... Um, mailing address, so I'll get that in the mail for you. Yeah. Hamburger's done. Let's take a look at it. So I decided I'm going to make myself a taco salad for dinner tonight. The girls will probably have, um, the girls will probably have tacos in like a low carb taco shell. Um, this taco seasoning that is in the jar has few less ingredients than the taco seasoning. If you're wondering the difference between the taco seasoning and the packages and the taco seasoning in the jars, the taco seasoning in the jar is more of really just a seasoning, okay? So if you just like taco flavored meat, if you are a taco flavored meat fan, taco seasoning in the jar is the way to go. Um, if you like to have more of like a sauce or like a, what do you, what would you call that? Uh, it has like a gravy, like a taco -y gravy. That's not the right word for it. But if you like to have like that saucy taco meat, the taco meat in the meal solutions packets is the way to go. But if you just like taco flavor, 
definitely get it in the jar. It's way, it's more cost effective. There is, how many servings in here? 91 servings. Uh, quarter teaspoon of, is one serving. So they're saying like two, spe two, te two tablespoons of seasoning per one pound of meat. So that's six times four. That's like 24 servings out of one pound of meat. Nah, it isn't quite 91 servings in this container. I would say it's more closer to, I would say you could easily get about 50 servings, 50 to 60 servings out of this seasoning jar. So that would be like, I don't know, 15 pounds of ground beef. 12 pounds of ground beef, something like that. Depending how much like taco meat you put on your stuff. So my meat is perfectly ground, perfectly browned, ground beef and ready to serve to my family. If you're keeping track, that took me eight minutes, four minutes to thaw, four minutes to cook, bam, ready to go. Plus I made salsa and I made some bomb guacamole <laughs> that I am looking forward to. Last time I made um Mexican meal, my avocado was no bueno. Um, it was bad. It was super bad. Um, so we've got a couple winners. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that tomorrow, if you guys wanted to join my team and be an Epicure gal or dude, just like me, who shows up, cooks food for their family real quick, uh, and shares Epicure, uh, we can get you signed up tomorrow for 20% off, which is $79. Um, that will be over tomorrow. That tomorrow is the last day. Um, secondly, I would love to get you guys hooked up with a cooking class link. A couple ways to do that. I have a group starting tomorrow for a mega class, or I can just give you a link tree that you can share with your friends and collect the host benefits. My average hostess gets about between 80 and a hundred dollars. Um, it's really pretty simple. Um, share the love, collect the rewards. So we're going to eat guys. Um, oh, I wanted to show you too. Okay, so you remember that you don't want to use aerosolated cooking sprays, right? Like, you don't want to use them, period. They're really not good for you, and they have a bunch of junk in them. Um, I went to Aldi today. I showed a picture of this. I've got these, okay? It comes in a pack of two. comes in a pack of two, $4.99 for two of these. Now watch. Um, I'm just I'm going to spray this onto a plate so you can see. You don't have to pump anything. You don't have to like build up pressure in there. Like the, um, what are those ones called, Kyle? Misto. Misto. You know, the ones where you got to put the cap thing on and you pump it and build up pressure in there. This one is just like a pump pump. You see that? This is great. This is super great. I was using an old pan <laughs> cooking spray bottle pump action. This thing didn't work super great all the time. This is gonna be game changer. So go to Aldi and get one of these. Um, this is perfect if you're gonna bake in your multi-purpose steam or you're gonna bake in anything silicone because the propellants in um, in the aerosolated spray um, oils will, will eat away at your silicone and will avoid the warranty. These have a three year warranty on them. So you don't wanna do anything to avoid that warranty just in case something happens. You want to follow all the rules. I'm not usually a rule follower, but for this, rule follower. All right, guys, we're going to eat dinner. Thanks for joining me. Let me know if I can do anything for you this week or next month, this week, next week, this month, whatever. Thanks for joining me. Hope you guys have a great week. All right, bye-bye.